Hi, welcome back to the second video in this uh, series of site modelling using AutoCAD and 3D Studio Max. Uh, I've changed to the 3D modelling workspace. Uh, use your workspace switcher to do that. And change to 3D modelling. Okay, I'm just going to park my command prompt just because I prefer to work that way. Okay, I can see my layers, that's what I need to do, and most importantly, UCSs as well. Okay, so I need to start thinking about the 3D sort of aspect now. Um, I'm going to freeze off the buildings, they're quite uh, okay in their own right, and we don't need to see the photograph. For an, well, actually, we do. We're going to create a, uh, a simple plane that is the same size as the photograph. Okay, so. Let's have a look at the layer properties, see what we've got here. Heck of a lot of layers. Now, let's try and get rid of some of these just now. Let's purge the drawing and clear away some unnecessary layers. So, uh, to purge, purge nested items, automatically purge off and data, purge all, purge all items. That should have got rid of a good few layers, that's a bit better. Okay, so we'll create a new layer and I'm going to call this 3D Mapper. Okay, and this is going to help us get the, the image of the, of the aerial photograph onto the final surface model. Okay, so I'll close that and make that the current layer. Let's give it a different colour just so we can see it, see that we've actually done something. Let's go for this kind of orangey red. Okay, and we want a 3D face. Okay, we've got a rectangle there already. Let's let's just delete the polyline. I don't think we'll need that just now. Okay, and we'll replace this with a 3D face from corner of photograph. You can pick four picks. Okay, so we've got an orange object there, a 3D face. And let's turn off the photograph just now. So we'll unload that. Okay, so we've not got much in the way of contour information here. It's pretty sparse, but it's enough to give us a, a topography. Okay, so we need to establish where the corners are. We, we've got these three contours, they're okay, but we need to get from, we need to have some edges for the terrain modeler and 3D studio to work with. Okay, let's do the easy ones first. Okay. This contour is very, very close to the corner of the model. If we look down on it, it's virtually at the corner. So just using a polyline, so let's let's go to that layer, let's use the layer that's there, use this contour layer. Okay, so do a polyline from the end point here, put ortho on, and just drag it away, do another one from here, and drag away. Okay, you can trim those two together. Okay, so that's the corner of the model, just there. Okay, now just a simple line to join these to each other. Okay, normal lines are happy to go down or up in the Z direction. Okay, but here a polyline might be safer to get to the corner of the model. So I'm picking the end point down here, but you can see where the object snap is, a, is ending up, above me. Okay, so we're at 5 meters here, we're saying that this whole area is going to be at 5 meters above sea level, so all we need to do is polyline from here to this corner. And then do another one from there to this, the end of this contour. Okay, A simple line down this side, but then it's a wee bit trickier. Okay, because our contours, we kind of run out of information here. So you'd expect this point to be still, it'll be lower than 10, but it'll be higher than 5. But how much? Okay, well, we've got a level here, we've got a spot height here of 7.3. That's very nearly the midpoint between the two. So between 10 and 5, you'll get 7.5. So let's bring a polyline from each side, okay, and then we'll be able to see the difference between the two. Okay, so polyline from each 
contour end and we can tell then that that's the difference between the two contours. Just draw a normal line between them okay and then what we can do is just say let's let's say we end up at the middle point here okay so check my objects maps just make sure I've got midpoint available and just the normal line from endpoint to midpoint and looking for the end of the contour midpoint there to the endpoint there okay so I'm just going to delete those and we've got an overall shape now that we can work with. If we wanted to tidy things up we could put sides on the model, 3D faces would, would do that, yeah, no harm in doing that. So create a new layer, 3D model sides, just does make things look a wee bit tidier if you back away from the model and choose a colour for those let's say let's say pink here make it current okay and then just the 3d faces that one went off a wee bit because of midpoint let's take midpoint off okay along this side 3d face from corner endpoint endpoint and then the end of the contour and then a triangle 3D face okay just shade that just so you can see what's happening here okay so we're putting sides on the box back to 2D wireframe for any drop drawing work okay need to be a wee bit careful here there's a lot of information down here now so a 3D face from the 15 meter contour to the end there and another one to this point and then a final three sided one and then around the back of the model probably about the same amount of work there find the end of the contour okay because we've not got any solids or anything here to to help us with this job. So it's, it's kind of a wee bit laborious, but so we'll shade that. So that's the that's the kind of sides put on the model. Now I'm not going to surface these, okay, so there's much more work in that. Let's let's try something automated to do that. Okay, so we've got enough material now to export this to 3D Studio to, to come up with some kind of uh, very basic model. Okay, so we don't need the 2D info, so let's have a look at the layers layers list, and let's start by switching off all the 2D stuff. Okay, I do need the buildings back on. Okay, so let's just put the buildings back on, and the mapper is on so everything else is okay. Okay, where's the contours? We're missing our contours. Ordinary contour line, there we go. Okay, so that's the information for a very crude model. Okay, so let's send that out. Um, so I'm going to give this file a name. Okay, and I'm going to save over this one, crude terrain and buildings. Okay, but this has still got all the 2D information in it, so I'm going to send out just these items. So we use the W block command for that. So it's W and return. We want to select the objects. Enter. Don't pick a base point. We want everything to correspond to 0, 0 if we need to bring things backwards. Okay, and it's going to rename, it's going to call it new block. That's good enough. If I want to give it a name, then I can do. So I'm just going to call this export and save and OK. So we've got the 3D Studio now. Okay, 
set your units to match what's coming in. So customize unit setup, metric meters, system unit setup, one unit equals one meter. Okay, set up any paths you need. Configure user paths. So I need to tell it where it's going to find the information. So I'll clear these ones away. And we'll add a folder that's got the material maps that I'm needing. Okay, that should be okay. The files are in there. So I'll use that path. And okay. And then we can import the DWG file. So import, import not been there yet today so it needs to be told where to go so I'm looking for the export file open okay size wise that looks good 204 meters 21 meters overall so that includes that's going from sea level up to the highest part of the highest building okay and I don't want it to smooth anything because everything that's coming in at the moment is angular so I'll take the smoothing off welding with a very low threshold of zero and orient normals of faces to try and make everything face outwards. So, okay. Okay, so we've got some stuff to work with. It's a bit a bit dark. But uh, let's get some materials on what we've got so far. So, materials editor. Okay, I'm using the ART renderer. Okay, cheap and cheerful, comes with the software. So I'll take this first material and simplify it. So let's turn it into matte paint. Um, I'm just going to call this sides. So this is going to be the sides and the base of the building. So the mapper object can receive that material. Okay, full strength of material, advanced, allows you to kill off any reflections then take the reflections away and I don't want it to be blue let's say the sides of the model are going to be a kind of a pale green okay that's good to go so I want to assign that I can drag that onto the, to the objects if I want to or you select the objects and assign to the selection okay then we've got the buildings so let's deal with the buildings. And let's say they're just a pale grey. So I don't have to redesign the material, I'll just take the same same one and just adapt it a wee bit. Okay, so let's just make these, these blocks just a simple grey. So we can drag the material on. Okay, and then we'll hide these because we want to deal with the, the terrain. So hide selected. And click on this, hide selected, and lastly that one. Okay, so we've got the, the lines that we bought through. So it's a closed shape, so it should stitch right to the edges of this. So select your contours and your shapes. Create a compound object, and we want to create a terrain. Okay, a bit difficult to see what's happening there, but it looks like something's happening. So let's turn it over. Okay, we've got a surface. Let's add edged faces to that so we can see the, the divisions. Now it's it does a, a reasonable good reasonably good job of joining high to low. Okay. But it can add a bit too many triangles, and, and that's what it's done here. Um, if we look at this particular area up here, okay, we're ending up with two, four, six, eight triangles starting from the from that line. If you compare that to AutoCAD, look at the same line, turn it round, let's turn off these for a second. Okay, look how many divisions there are in that line. One, two, three, four. So it's doubling up the number of triangles, kind of unnecessarily really. So 
So have a look at this and then you can set you can change the settings for the triangulation. Okay, so we've got simplification panel. So if I use half of the points, it will give me the amount of triangles that I would generate if I'd done it by hand. Okay, and you can see the triangulation has actually changed. It, it does change the direction of what's happening. Okay, but that's okay. Okay, the other issue that you get with this automated triangulation is things like this. Okay, really the triangles should all go back to this point. Okay, so it's, it's kind of analysed the shapes and thought, oh, I, it's probably less triangles if I do it this way. But the problem is there, we've got a flat, a little flat plateau. Okay, it's not that easy to tell, but it's sloping down here, one big triangle, and then it's plateauing at these bits. So we've got quite a few of those little plateau areas appearing. Okay, but with a big terrain model, that is going to save you a lot of time so we'll just run with that, we'll let, let, let the software do it. The alternative is to do it ourselves and it's a heck of a lot of triangulation, 3D facing. Okay, so we'll keep the surface here just now, but we'll need the mapper object visible again. Unhide by name, the mapper. Okay. And we need to create a material for the aerial photograph. Okay, so let's take the buildings one and rename it to aerial. Okay, doesn't matter about colour for this because it's going to be replaced by a picture. Okay, so the base colour, click on no map, then maps, general, double click bitmap, need to browse to the folder that's got the material in. Okay, so it's the aerial photograph, the cropped one. Make sure you don't leave a tick on sequence. Okay, it's not the biggest of images, it's only 726 by 584, it's pretty small. You know, if we had a higher res one, it might be a wee bit better. Okay, you can see it's kind of repeating the picture many times there. Okay, so you, you switch off, use real world scale. And you should see the picture just once now, and probably be better to preview this on a cube. Okay, so that's ready to use. Okay, assign that to the terrain. Okay, I want to see the picture on the terrain, so you switch on show shaded. Okay, and you can see there's nothing really happening there. Uh, it doesn't know how to repeat the picture, so we need to add UVW mapping to that. So modify, okay, UVW map, don't use real world, okay, we've got a good fit there, that's okay. Now, just to be certain though, what I would do is use your mapper object, okay, this will pick up any indiscrepancies. So mapper object, UVW map this, and because it's a simpler shape, it's just a simple rectangle, you get very clean mapping coordinates. Okay, so if UVW map that using real world. Okay, now click back on your terrain and we want to pull the mapping from another object. So instead of using the kind of automated one there use acquire, pick the mapping object, acquire absolute or relative, I would go for absolute though. Okay, didn't appear to be much change there, that's fine, but we know for sure now that the aerial photo is mapped to an object that's the size of the aerial photo and not this surface here. You can see up here there's a little bit of an issue, we've lost a corner just there, I just noticed that. Okay, do you see there we're missing a 3D surface here? Okay, so it's not quite closed the model cleanly. So let's add that to the to the terrain. So let's edit the mesh. So we want to edit mesh, find the edit mesh modifier. 
Okay, I'm going to tilt the model quite steeply so I can zoom in in an area and see what's happening. Maybe change to orthogonal view. So you press the letter U, okay, and it allows you to to zoom a bit cleverly. So we need a triangle there and another triangle here to stitch the edge of the model. There is a there is a stitching facility as part of the terrain. Um, just remembered that. Okay, so you're looking for stitch border. Mm, it's not quite done as much, so I think we'll we'll add our own here. So edit mesh. Okay, we want to work at the face level, and we're going to create a face if we can find it. Just pushed it further bit down now. So create a face. You can see the the points appear, the vertices. So I'm going to go from vertex to vertex to vertex and then escape. Okay? Vertex, 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 escape. Okay, so you see the material is now kind of running through onto the object. Let's twist around. I think we might need one at the back there as well. Great. I think we're okay there. It's just that area that needed a little bit of attention. So if we want to stop working at the face level, so you click this strip here. Okay, and if you think the mapping needs pulled through, then all you need to do is pull the mapping to the top of the stack. Okay, just put the mapping at the top and everything should be tidy. Okay, let's switch everything on now. So unhide all. Okay, and you know, from this distance, things are looking pretty good. Let's add a sun positioner. So we add a light, a sun positioner. Just click and drag. Okay, check your north direction. We want it to be accurate, so shadows are in the right place. Set a distance for the sunlight head. Modify this to choose your location. We're in Bonnie, Scotland, as usual. So we're in Europe. We're close to Edinburgh, close enough. Okay, and okay. Now my shadows aren't necessarily in the same direction as the shadows on the aerial photograph, so that's going to cause problems. Okay, and that's why this is pretty rough. You know, you can't really use it. Okay, so the render looks like it's snowing today. Uh, it's just because we've got the exposure control too low. So rendering, exposure control. Okay, we haven't got a physical camera, so we switch that off. And exposure value, usually around about the f in between 13 and 15 works best for most scenes. So we'll check that. That didn't quite work. Did it change? No, because the number didn't change. Why not? 14, please. So let's check, click in another one just to make sure that changes. That's better. Okay. So it's a very crude model. That works okay. From the air it looks alright, but when you go to ground level, so if I put a camera, if I look up the road here, let's place a target camera roughly in where the road is. Bit difficult to see the road, so let's let's have a default shading. Okay, now my camera is under the ground there, so I need to move it upwards. So let's view through the camera. So instead of orthographic, let's go to the camera's view. Pull down. Okay, so I'm looking up the road now. I can see my camera. Okay, and this is where it starts to to look much weaker. So if I render now. You can see that I can. I'm able to see underneath the buildings. The buildings aren't stitched into their site properly. The, the, the photograph is nowhere near good enough resolution to give me any detail here. And we've still got the shadows issue. I've got two sets of shadows here. Very strong one there, and then one from the aerial photograph here. I've also got problem of having flat cars and things and flat trees. So it's pretty, 
pretty weak in that respect. Uh, we could drop some trees in, but it's not going to make a, a big difference there. We need more definition in the road, for sure. And also, the road is kind of running across it. We've got a, a slope running across the road, and that's not what happens. Okay, The road's going uphill, so that's where the slope would be, but there shouldn't be a slope across the road. Okay, Otherwise, the kind of cars are kind of leaning. Okay, So what happens is the slope comes down, we get a flat pavement, flat road, flat pavement, slope again. That's generally how sites would, would work. So we need to add more detail into the AutoCAD model. And that's what we'll do in the third video.